Colorado is off to the Big 12. We all know that. But what is their fit? Can Dion dominate? Can they take over the Big 12 and make up for what has been a lackluster decade of college football in the Pac-12? We're going to talk about that and more on today's episode of Locked on Buffs. You are Locked on Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? This is Locked on Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Borber. Today, we're having our first ever crossover episode on Locked on Buffs. Joining me is Cody Stovall, the the lovely, the great, the majestically bearded host of Locked on Oklahoma State. Cody, thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to be talking about all things Colorado, all things Big 12, because we're conference members again. We're, we're basically... That's right. We were step siblings, but now we're siblings again, is what it feels like. Um, before we dive into all of this great, great um, ongoings in college football, I need you guys to know that this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire could feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cody, let's dive in. Um, Colorado to the Big 12. Uh, I've talked about it multiple times on this show. Uh, if you guys don't know how they got there, I'll break it down in a couple of sentences. Basically, the Pac-12 had a whole year to get a deal. They did not. Um, right before Pac-12 Media Day, which is now math, I think two weeks ago, um, they said, <laughs> can we get some numbers, please? And the Pac-12 was like, no. And so they were like, OK, um, they went through Pac-12 Media Day, which must have been super awkward, by the way. And then. About a few days later, they left um, to the Big 12, and joining them is the Four Corner Schools, and it's going to be a whole new conference. And I want to see your thoughts on Colorado and the Big 12. One, what's their fit? Um, can Coach Prime d- uh, dominate the conference? I feel feel like it maybe is up for grabs. Has kind of been my stance on it. What do you think? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, brother man. I greatly appreciate it. And it, just jumping right into the fit, I think the fit is perfect, right? A lot of the Pac-12 community, even some of the ones that are now in the Big 12, ironically enough, wanted to throw a bunch of shade at at Colorado, right? They even wanted to talk about, oh, congrats, the Big 12, truck stock conference, you got the worst team, blah, blah, all that crap, right? That has no bearing on how they're going to fit in the Big 12 because everything you're talking about is pre Deion Sanders. I don't care what anybody says. All of the haters that are like, well, we don't know if we can coach at this level. We know one thing. He'll be prepared. He'll have his players prepared at this level, at any level, at any point in time. So I don't see that as as much of a concern. And you guys have some dudes, man. Y'all have some dudes. Shador Sanders is a dude. Shiloh looks pretty good. I know you got that Jacquez Robinson transfer from Alabama, six foot whatever corner. He looks really daggone good. You've got, I guess, a a freshman from Lakewood or or Lakeland, Colorado, that uh, looks very, very, very impressive. Your offense seems to be still in the show, but your defense is going to have some dudes. Your your first string, right? Your first string is going to be very competitive. Now you mentioned, can they win the Big Twelve? Okay, could they? Yeah, w- yeah. But first of all, let's focus on the the whack is pack is Mountain Twelve first. Um, what they got to do this season is exactly what I think they can do, which is they're going to jump up and bite some people, as we talked about when. You, you jumped on my show. They're good enough. They're going to be prepared enough to catch some people. Now, is it going to be catching a USC per se? Probably not. But there are some teams in the Pac-12 that I think that are a little bit inflated. And I think Colorado is good enough to capitalize on that. And, yeah, of course, they're a perfect fit, man. They go back to the big seven days, right, before it was even the big eight. Mm-hmm. So, the, the fits there, I, I know geography doesn't really matter as much, but for travel, it does, right? There's there's not there's not an overabundance of fans that can hop in a car and drive 18 hours. There's not an overabundance of fans that can hop in a plane and go wherever they want, whenever they want. So if you're talking about a nine-hour drive from Colorado to Oklahoma, that's maneuverable, right? People can make that happen. So the geography maybe doesn't matter to the footprint, maybe doesn't matter to the dollar bills and the TV, but it matters to the yeses of the world. And and for that reason alone, I think it's a it's a perfect fit. It's a fit that was always there. They should have never left. 
And, and I think they realize that. I think most of the fan base realizes that as well. You get what Dion's good at, which is what? The state of Texas. Yep. They I get mean, to take over. They get to take over the state of Texas. They kind of, I think it doesn't matter a lot, but having UCF as a conference member, um, Coach Prime has kind of been, uh, not kind of, he he wants Florida guys. He wants Floridians. I think if you could give him an option of a roster full of five stars or a roster full of Florida guys, he might take the roster full of Florida guys because there's just that much potential um, in guys from Florida. Uh, I think the one thing that really stands out to me about Colorado to the Big 12 is their competitiveness. Um, there were, let's just call a spade a spade. They were not competitive in the Pac-12. They had two winning seasons, which I call one and a half because of the COVID year. Yeah. Um, they, they went four and two. Um, it is a winning season technically. Uh, but who knows what would have happened if they played a full schedule. And then they had one year where they made it to the Pac-12 championship and proceeded to get blown out by Washington. Um, I think it was like 41 to 10. Um, so not great. Uh, the Big 12, hey, as did, I... Hey, didn't we play you in a bowl in like 2016? I think so. I think so. I don't remember. I wasn't there. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, I think, but what I was alluding to is the Pac or the Big 12, excuse me. Right now, I think it's a little more up for grabs, even with Texas and Oklahoma. I think this is the first time since 2009 that Texas has been favored to win the conference. Um, the past two years were the first year since 1998, where neither Texas nor Oklahoma played in an available Big 12 title game. So I think programs like Colorado, Utah, Oklahoma State, who are typically near the top, uh, they all have like a, it reminds me of the race, to the gold rush. Um, everybody's racing to get there first. This feels like a gold rush to the top of the, the Big 12. And I think Coach Prime is the perfect person to lead the way. Would, would you agree or would you maybe push back on that? A hundred percent agree. Dude, I remember having a conversation with people uh, that, well, this time last year right, whenever he was having meetings with TCU. And before Sonny Dykes got the job, I think there was a lot of people that thought there was a possibility that Dion could potentially get, get that job. Obviously, it didn't end up working, but I think it worked out for the betterment of the Big 12 because I was saying then, even though some people were like, well, you had the crowd that he's not going to be able to you know, come to this level and get it done. And then you had the other crowd that's like, well, you know, do we want that in the Big 12? And I was like, hell to the yeah, we do. We definitely want that in the Big 12, right? Put Dion at TCU, give him the Texas recruiting base. You know he can go to Florida. And one one of the benefits, right, if you can count the stars and find a few benefits of being in the Pac-12, one of them's going to be you built a little bit of a footprint in California. You did, right? Is it a big one? Maybe not. But it's Dion flipping standards. Anybody from California to the, the Bronx knows who Dion is. You know what I mean? And all you have to do is go click on Dion Sanders highlights and get lost for hours. Well, we have the benefit of a Barry Sanders type of scenario there, thankfully, but it is what it is. You have something at your arsenal that is perfect for the conference. It's perfect for marketing and it's perfect for somebody like a Brett Yormar. Like, are you kidding me? If you're looking for symbiosis, like a symbiotic relationship between everybody in the conference, Brett Yormark is going to be able to do it. And Bray Yormark's mm-hmm. going to be able to pull everything there is out of Dion. And I think that puts us in a good position for the next round of realignment, which, me on, which means Dion makes more money, which means Colorado can maybe keep him longer than people think if he's successful. Right. I think there's a lot of things that factor into what he brings to the table. I think that you touched on it too, is he's a brand. Um, I think the Pac-12, this has kind of been – an unpopular opinion, but I think it's the truth. If Coach Prime was not at Colorado, is Colorado as coveted as a Big 12 program or as a realignment target? Not really. Um, they struggled with Carl Durrell. Mel Tucker, who the fans re- refer to as Midnight Mel for his late departure to Michigan State, he showed them one year of semi prominence. Um, they still went five and seven. <laughs> There's been yeah. not a lot of success, but losing Coach Prime was huge for the Pac-12 because you know every single game regardless of it's Colorado versus Arizona, Colorado versus Stanford or Colorado versus USC, people are going to be dialed in. The spring game was a sellout, Cody, and it was snowing. Yeah. And yep. as, as a Californian who does not live where it snows, I was traumatized. But the fans were not, they were all there ready to see Coach Prime. They were buying their Coach Prime merch and they loved every second of it. So, it's going to be a huge move, the Big 12 huge move for Coach Prime and We're going to be talking about who his rival could be when we come back after I tell you about our great sponsors over at LinkedIn. 
if you are looking for a potential hire, um, everything's high stakes for your small business. You want to be 100 percent certain that you could have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for um, your team faster and for free. I personally got my job at the Pac-12 Network when I graduated college um, off of LinkedIn. Met with the hiring manager. We connected, was able to meet with someone else. We got hired. I got hired, got the job, met some great people. Um, so if you want to do the same, find a perfect candidate like I was, um, add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you could quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So if you want to hire those perfect candidates, LinkedIn jobs helps you find those candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Okay, Cody. It's time mm-hmm. to get, we're, we're, we're going to beef a little. Um, not me and Cody. We're fine. Me and Cody are not on the rocks, um, despite despite what Cody may say. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Colorado is obviously returning to the Big 12, but it's a new Big 12. Um, the last time they were there, there were some members like, say, Nebraska or Missouri who are no longer there. Um, there's going to be members like Texas and Oklahoma who are not there. Who do they? Who who would you consider their rival? They never really found one in the Pac-12. Um, I think everyone kind of – there's Oregon, I guess, what people would point to as a rival, but everyone wants to be a rival with Texas, Oklahoma, Oregon, whoever it is. Everybody wants to be a rival with the big schools. Who is yeah. Colorado fit? As far as uh, rivalry goes, well, you know, I think everybody and and their mom right now is pretty excited to get a hold of Utah, especially since they 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 barely snuck in, right? Like a, like an OU style thief in the night, <laughs> and as soon as they snuck in, they're instantaneously saying, "Well, now we're going to go run this conference. This is going to be easy." Like, wait, wait, what? Hold on, TV time out now. <laughs> the Pac-12 is not bad. I know you you think there's some depth there this season. I think that outside of quarterback, there's not a lot of, of depth in the words that exist within the Pac-12. But we, it, well, I, I digress. Okay, but nonetheless, I just I, I feel like you're going to have the opportunity to to win some games. But when you come to the Big 12, it's every single week, right? You can't. You can't load up for a road trip and say, oh, shucks, we get to go to Lawrence, Kansas anymore. You can't say, oh, great, we get to go to Ames, Iowa. It's not like that. You don't get to go to Fort Worth or Stillwater either. Like, you do because they're cool experiences, but, you you know, the motto in the SEC is, isn't it just it means more or something to that effect, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. That may be. That's why the SEC is top dog. I'm cool with that. But – Fans will see, and and form, you know, Colorado fans that are old school will be reminded that maybe it doesn't quite as matter as much as the SEC, but it it, it matters really close. Like in in Big Twelve country, we care. You will not go to a stadium where you you don't have passionate fans. Ninety nine percent of them, to my knowledge, are pretty inviting, pretty welcoming. Right? You always hear of Southern hospitality. It's pretty infectious around the conference as well. So. The fan bases are going to see a big difference between Mm -hmm. attending Pac-12 games and attending Big 12 games. So everybody's going to want a piece of Utah. I do think that since they came in with you and they were the one, they were part of the crew that was throwing y'all under the bus for, oh, look at Colorado, the worst team in the conference, tucking tail and running away. And then it was, look at Colorado, ruining the pack. You know what I mean? Y'all caught a lot of, uh, of crap. So I think Arizona State, Utah, are viable options, and I saw it on on my Oklahoma State page. If Texas Tech's not our natural rival, the next one would probably be Colorado, especially from a geographic uh, point of view. Right? I like that. Okay, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna. We're going to school, Cody. Um, I'm gonna give you a, a school, and you have to give me a, a letter grade, A to F, um, in terms of okay. how much of a rivalry rivalry they'd be. I'll give you a case, a little one sentence case. And I want you to grade it. Um, give me your thoughts up, up first. We got UCF. Um, they both rock the black and gold. Um, UCF is, I think a noisy program. Um, I think big 12 fans will kind of see, I have a friend, a lot, a few friends in Florida. Um, and they went to Florida and Florida state and they talk about how annoying, which shout out to UCF fans. You guys are passionate. Annoying just means passionate for the most part. 
um, how annoying they are. And so right. I don't know if Colorado fans are ready for that level of pestering or not. So we'll go the battle for the black and gold. I feel like you can make a little trophy out of it. What would you give Colorado versus UCF rivalry wise? Uh, you know what, man? I, I, I could give it a B. I could see it. They do talk way too much, right? They, they talk as much as Utah fans without the Pac-12 trophies or, you know, significant trophies, National power champion. five trophies to go <laughs> along with it, right? Yeah, the Dangster don't have – well, well they, they they do have a national title trophy, but we're not going to get into that, okay? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to keep this episode PG, buddy. Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but I give it a B, man. It's not bad. Okay. I think UCF uh, – they also have the the fact that every, Coach Prime wants Florida. And so I think there's kind of like a – maybe Gus Malzahn gets protective of the home state, lock it down. I could already see the lockdown Florida Twitter things when they yeah, yeah. land a recruit or whatever it is. So we'll go that one. B, not bad. Um, TCU, they've only played one time. Um, it's going to be two times uh, after about two weeks or three weeks from now. <laughs> it's going to be two more – or one more time. Um, it was a – pretty interesting game um it was like an awful t- game last year but it was interesting because they were both really bad and then obviously tcu went on to become what they became but there's been some there's storylines that you mentioned uh tcu was interested in coach prime i don't know what went down or what didn't go down did he get offered we don't know did he turn down the job for colorado we don't know um i would assume maybe sonny dykes was probably a higher uh, priority just because he had the smu ties and the dallas ties at the time but Colorado TCU. Um, maybe that's a, a rivalry worth uh, brewing because does TCU have a natural rival in the Big 12? I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. T- TCU and Baylor can get pretty pretty chippy, especially when, when they're both pretty daggone good. So, okay. I, I mean, I would go that direction. But TCU is not bad. I would say uh, – I would say maybe maybe in the B department okay. as well, low B, maybe maybe a C plus, B minus. Gotcha. Okay. Now we're going to head over to the mountain range. We're going BYU, Colorado. Technically, they're both new. Obviously, Colorado's returning to the Big 12. Um, they've had some past history. Uh, I think BYU, very passionate fan base. Colorado, very passionate fan base. It could be negative 10 degrees and wherever they're playing, both of those stadiums will be sold out, which is cool. Um, what do you think of that one? Obviously, they have Utah. There. Um, no, no, they're just too nice. They're too classy, and they hate Utah too much. I give this right. one a I give this one a D. The Holy War automatically kind of surpasses everybody, which yeah. I mean understandably so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then I turn my attention to Kansas State. Um obviously they have Kansas. Um does Kansas really is, does that rivalry have enough juice yet? Um I think it will have some juice because obviously Kansas is good again or good. Um, but does it have enough yeah. juice to be a consistent rivalry? Well, if you're going for consistency, right, other than Oklahoma State, K-State is that university. So if you're going up against, you know, the 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 idea of the Pac-12 inconsistent team against a Big 12 consistent team and proximity-wise, yeah, man, I, I could buy this one. I okay. could buy this one uh, gr- growing some legs. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give this an A-. I did, You know, and I didn't even necessarily think about it, but um, – yeah, dude, K-State is a really good example of just how to always be good. They they just value the the good things, I guess. They're just the, the little apple is what they call it. Um, it's mm-hmm. no Big Apple. I've been to the Big Apple, yep. I promise. Yep. Never set foot in Kansas, but I know it's not the Big Apple. <laughs> um, but uh, they have a lot of consistency to offer. They're a very good program. Um, last one, and I want to save this one for you, obviously, your guys' rival, obviously, Oklahoma, off to the SEC. Um, there hasn't been, at least from what it seems like, a lot of efforts to keep Bedlam alive. Um, and so, obviously, Colorado, and I want I want people to know, this isn't me saying Colorado's going to replace Oklahoma, but more so take place of Oklahoma as Oklahoma State's primary rival in the Big 12. What grade would you give that? And give me a little background on that one. I mean, I, if Colorado is good fairly quickly, then, mm-hmm. yeah, I could definitely see it, right? It's the same concept as we just kind of talked about with Kansas State is – but it does go a little bit deeper, right? Because, you know, there was times that we were really good. And there was – K-State was pretty bad for like 65 years straight, right? Mm-hmm. We at least had moments in our 70 years of, of the suck where we were pretty doggone good. It was random. It'd come out of nowhere. 
But, you know, we, we, we popped up. And those years that we popped up were with having the, the Thurman Thomases and Barry Sanders of the world, we could pop up and, and cause you guys problems. You know what I mean? Back when you guys were very, very, very good. So I do think that the old school fan base, there's going to carry a little bit of an extra stick. And like you mentioned earlier, there's no OU. There's no Texas. There's no Nebraska. There's no Mizzou. There's no A&M. So when you're tracing back to the old Big 12, K-State can be, but I think there's a little bit more of, of a decent history of cool games between Colorado and those states. So, yeah, man, I, I buy it. Uh, I could give it an A. Now, if Colorado's not very good and it's just another, you know, five to seven win type of scenario all the time and Oklahoma State stays, right, where we've been the last decade, then it's not much of a rivalry. Does that make sense? So right, if you guys it. are good and you're yeah. good quickly, I give it an A. If if not, um, I think I think our fit with tech is is pretty good. So so I'll give it a, a C. So you heard it here first, folks. Colorado needs to be good, which we all expect Coach Prime to find some success. Um, Colorado needs to be good for rivalries to kind of form. If not, um, I think Houston right now is kind of viewed as the bottom of the barrel for the Big 12, them or West Virginia. Right. So yeah. you, either, you either be good and get a, a prominent program or you, you get West Virginia. So you you pick you pick wisely. Um, yeah. When do we come back? There's four more Pac-12 schools out there. Does the Big 12 throw them a lifeline? Do they let them figure out their own things? We're going to talk about that when we get back. We're back. We're talking about what the Big 12 does. Um, we all we all see it. Um, coaches have talked about it. Analysts, talking heads like ourselves have talked about it. We literally look like talking heads right now, too, because of this format. Um, we've all talked about it. College football is heading to a three-league, maybe four, um, if the ACC can survive. Um, Three-and-a-half-ish league <laughs> super conference. Um it's going to be like the NFL, possibly. Um, is I'll say allegedly or possibly until it happens, just to kind of there leave that for the imagination. Yeah. But there's four schools right now in the Pac-12 that are looking for homes. Um, I cover Stanford, so I personally know that they're kind of talking with the ACC. Um, they can be independent. They are the only school of the four that kind of have that cachet to do so. Uh, but obviously, if the Big 12 were to come offering, do they take it? I don't know. Um, I feel like Stanford... Uh, me and Cody, Cody talked about this off the air. They don't really align, um, I guess, in terms of culture. We'll go with that way. We'll we'll keep it culturally. They and yeah, Cal yeah. don't really, really align with the Big Twelve, so that could be interesting. Um, but I wanted to get your thoughts, and I know we're, I'm gonna preface this before you dive in. The Pac-12 didn't throw any lifelines to the Big Twelve, um, but let's hold that against the commissioner, not against these four programs. So, keeping that in mind, what do you think of the possibility of adding these four schools? Um, I, no, I, I would say 10% and the 10% possibility would strictly be if ESPN or Fox or, you know, the two mixed together, if they came to Brett Yormark and said, listen, ma'am, we know what you want to do. We know what you're trying to do. We will pay X amount of dollars just for Washington state, Oregon state, right? That type of thing. If that were to happen, Brett Yormark is a businessman. I could see, I could see maybe, and you do have to have the conversation about potentially getting to 20 it might be realistic but the acc is not in great footing florida state seems to very much have the 600 million dollars necessary to throw around if they are going to get out of that deal and then if you have seven teams that that, that you know think like-minded i think you're exactly right the big three power three a three whatever you want to call it seems to be the direction we're going and all right. Brett Yormark is from out east. The Big mm. 12 just put on a clinic at Rucker Park. And it was Big 12 players, Big 12 coaches, Big 12 uh, merchandise, memorabilia, whatever. They're handing this stuff around New York and all this fun jazz. He has eyes on Madison Square Gar Garden being part of some Big 12 events. UConn has been in deep discussions for a very long time now for a reason, right? It's not just because. You know, they're good at basketball. It's not just because they just won a national title. It's because Brett Yormark wants to go out east. And I do think that for the future security of the Big 12, which is what this is all about, yes, it's about money, but secondarily to money, it's about security, right? If you're going to talk about 
future security. If you leave West Virginia, Cincinnati, and UCF out on an island all by themselves, there might eventually become some animosity a little bit. You know what I mean? That they're mm-hmm. having to travel all the all out west all the daggone time, right? But they don't get as much love out east. So I do think that from a footprint standpoint, Brent Yolmark does have to lean in the direction of going east on top of him loving it, on top of you know him loving the idea of even a Yukon. But when the ACC does fall by the wayside, your Louisville's, your Pitts, your NC State's, they're going to need places to go. Yeah, great points. Um, all I heard, though, was Big 12 likes New York. Um, so St. John's to the Big 12 is what I'm hearing. Um, oh, we heard it here answer. first. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, if we were going to reach that far, UConn would already be a part of this. A hundred percent. Right. And people forget. Brett Omar is- wants it. He wants it really bad, but mm-hmm. he's smart enough and he's savvy enough to take a step back and say, all right, maybe the ink is, is all but dry with UConn, but as much as Utah shoves their nose so high, nobody loves it. They're a good move. They're mm-hmm. the right move. They make the most sense. Right. So, the four corner schools were always the best get. They were guaranteed extra money because they're all big time power fives, right? We're not talking about how good, great, bad. I'm indifferent for all that. We're talking about the money side of it, which we're going to get from ESPN, Fox, whoever. It is what it is, right? So if he was reaching, UConn would already be in it. He's a businessman. He's going to wait just like he's going to wait on this ACC stuff. Does he still yeah. want UConn? Yes, he does. But he realizes if he can get Pitt and Louisville and NC State and even maybe in North Carolina, right? Maybe we, we swing through the fences. Maybe we somehow magically get a Miami. All of that stuff is in play. If, if some of that stuff doesn't happen, then we always know UConn's readily available. Yeah, and UConn, which a lot of people don't know this, surprisingly, um, right by ESPN, right down the road. Um, I went there to do grad school at Quinnipiac. Um about 20, 30 minutes away from UConn. Uh, shout out Frank Pepe's, the best pizza you'll ever have. Um, a lot hey, of, speaking, lot of, of pe- speaking of that and money yeah. and future, doesn't the, isn't there a fun company in Bristol, Connecticut? Four-letter one. Um, I believe yeah. it's Espen is what they refer to it as. Espen, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 Espen. yeah, yeah. Little, it, little, little uh, startup company. Um, I think, I I think they'll do well. <laughs> I think they'll do that's, well. In the that's school. French for San Diego. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think realistically the Big 12 has a lot of options. Um I think the Pac-12 schools especially now, um especially Stanford and Cal specifically. I think Oregon State, Washington State unfortunately have kind of been left out of every discussion and they'll go anywhere where they're offered, which I mean, you got to do what's best for you. And so I can't fault them for that. But Stanford and Cal, I would say the consensus has been they've gone from no, we're better than them to you know what, maybe maybe we should reconsider because they valued academics, which I mean, Stanford, I don't know. I get the whole valuing academics things, but like just because you go to the Big 12 doesn't mean you're still not going to be Stanford. Like I, right. I, I don't understand that that art of, part, of, part of the argument. So I think you're pretty clear no on it. I'm a tentative maybe because I think Stanford alone has the brand. Um, they have baseball. They're the best athletic department in the country. They won 26 of 29 directors cups. Um, I think Washington state and Oregon state kind of bring, I think competitive teams. I don't think you're getting a lot out of them. You're not getting a market. That'd be more so as a favor. And then Cal and Stanford, you get the Bay area market. Um, so there's a lot to think about for Brett Yormark. Um, there's a lot to debate and we're going to find out as every day goes on. It feels like there's a new rumor that surfaces. So you guys know that we will have you covered here at Locked on Buffs and over there at Locked on Oklahoma State. I'm Kevin Borba. He's Cody Stovall. You guys have a great day. Cody, thanks for joining us and keep the beard majestic. <laughs> Absolutely.